Hi there designers, many of you have asked for that sexy, dramatic chrome effect I've done on my retro typography. In this video I'm going to show you the exact method I took to make my type shine. The cool thing about this technique is that it's completely editable and allows you to swap your text for any graphic in no time. And before the 3D designers flood, you're already on it. And before the 3D designers flood comment section saying something like Bruh, that can be done in seconds in 3D software. Please bear this thing in mind. I teach what I know and I wouldn't touch the subjects that I'm not an expert in. 3D software is one of those subjects. If 3D is something you know, make a video about that and stop gatekeeping the knowledge. <sighs> Drop your graphic into Photoshop and place it however you like. Double click on the layer to see the layer styles. In bevel and emboss, dial up on the depth and size. Let's say around 335. Set the highlights and shadow modes to the max and make sure your gloss contour is linear. Then set the color overlay to 50% black. Stroke to around 7, depending on the scale of your canvas, and set the position to be outside. Let's make sure the inner glow blend mode is set to normal. It is in white color, opacity is 100%, and the edge size set to around 10. The stroke and inner glow preferences should be very minimal, as they just add to the chrome curvature effect. Hit OK and convert this layer to smart object. Rename it and draw an oversized box over it with a rectangle tool. Name it Grad. Bring the fill parameter to zero and in layer preferences set the gradient overlay blending mode to multiply. Switch the angle to however you like and start setting the gradient. Now this is an important stage of the design as it sets the direction and flow of the gradient that chrome effect will be mapping later on. So make sure you place the locations of the color pins similarly to the locations on my screen and hit OK. Let's switch background to black and clip the grad layer to our master graphic. Next is probably the most crucial stage of this tutorial because this is where the chrome effect is coming to life. But before we get into this, please be sure to support my work by liking and subscribing. It's needless to say that it's important to know if I should carry on doing this kind of content or not. Now, where were we? What gradient map does is it remaps the color values with the values given by this map. To put it bluntly, you take what's been set to white, for example, and turns it to the color set by the map. In this instance, it is black. Let's rename the layer and clip it to our master graphic. Then go to the editor and start adding some color values. You'll probably start with the default black to white gradient, but for our contrast, we need to make sure that the both pins are white. The one on the right, I'll switch at the very end of this segment. Set the third pin to the location at about 20 and turn it to about 50% black. Fourth pin to the location 32, color black. Adjust mid location to be closer to the third pin. Next one at 44, color 28% black. Number six at 48, color white. Pin number seven at about 54, color 36% black. And to finalize, turn the last pin to white, as mentioned before. Next, textures. Nothing adds more realism to the metallic look than textures. Pick something with the look of the dry plaster, desaturate it, bring up the contrast and make sure to pin it to the master layer, with the opacity brought down to about 4-8%, to just enough to see it. Rename this layer, make the duplicate of it, bring it above all and pin it to the master layer too. Let's set the blending mode to hard light and turn the opacity up to 30%. Next, we are going to add a little curvature to our graphic. For that, make a copy of your master layer and bring it above all. In bevel and emboss, let's set it to emboss. Depth to 100, direction down, size to around 10 pixels and hit OK. Rename the layer and make a copy of it. We would avoid making so many layers dedicated to bevel and emboss if people in Photoshop's developers team could just add an option to be able to add as many effects as we need within the layer style. Just like they did with stroke, inner shadows, color overlays and many others. Okay, I'll stop complaining. Let's name this layer an inner filler. Clear all the styles. Set fill options to zero and go to bevel and emboss. 
Here, tick next to texture and set it to be grainy. You can manually add these textures to your library. Just Google how to do it. Set the scale to 21% and depth to around 20. Then back in bevel and emboss. Set the layer to outer bevel. Depth to around 200. Set light direction to up and size to 35. We want it to be filled subtly, so turn down the opacity of the white color to be around 20% and hit OK. And here we are, my friends. The most of the chrome work is done. The other part is about adding touches of glares and sparkles. I do this by making a copy of all my layers, comping them together, and applying a motion blur. Setting the direction of the light glares, ideally against the flow of the grad, for their better visibility. Overlaying it with screen blending mode and applying adjustment levels to hide some of the blur. I then add some sparkles using brushes. If you don't have these, you can just get some sparkle imagery from Google and slam them over here using screen blending mode. As I mentioned before in the beginning of this video, keeping your master graphic as a smart object allows you to replace your design at any time. If you make a mistake or simply decided to change the design, you can just update your smart object and the chrome effect will apply automatically. Now it doesn't apply to the raster layers like glares and sparkles obviously, so you'll need to retweak those manually. One final thing we'd need to do is to add color. To do that, go to filter, neural filters, colorize. Let's set the focal points as we want and give them the color we like. Something like retro, synth wave, art vibe. Baby, you me that I... That's it. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comment section if you've got any questions. And feel free to share your Chrome experiments by tagging me on Instagram and TikTok. Bye for now.